Here is an example of 2D Fourier transform with a real image. In the top left is the source image. In the top middle is K-space. K-space is filled by performing a Fourier transform on the source image. In the top right is the reconstructed image, which is formed by taking the inverse Fourier transform of K-space. The source image is sampled at many different spatial frequencies, which are represented with a color overlay. The contribution of that spatial frequency to the image is shown on the bottom in the middle. In the center of K-space, spatial frequencies are low and the waves overlying the source image are big. The contribution of these lower frequencies is seen when only the center of K-space is filled. Large structures can be vaguely seen, but fine detail is blurred because fine detail is high spatial frequency data. As we sample higher spatial frequencies, the waves overlying the source image become closer together and we move further to the edge of K-space. Looking at K-space, it becomes evident why we treat the center of K-space preferentially when performing MR. Low spatial frequencies not only give us information that's most important for seeing subtle contrast differences, it's also where most of the information in the image is stored. As we move away from the axes in K-space, data becomes very sparse. This is evident in the bottom middle panel that shows the contribution of that spatial frequency to the final image. Near the edges of K-space, the contribution is almost all black. Here's the same image undergoing 2D Fourier transform and then inverse 2D Fourier transform to create a resulting image. In the top left is the source image, in the top middle is K-space. K-space is filled by performing a Fourier transform on the source image, and in the top right is the reconstructed image, which is formed by taking the inverse Fourier transform of K-space. This time, however, K-space is filled from the outside in. High spatial frequencies are sampled first, and then lower spatial frequencies. This shows the difference between the contributions of the periphery and the center of K-space. Note how regions where there is a sharp change in brightness in the source image are first shown in the reconstructed image, and only when the center of K-space is filled do the differences in the brightnesses of larger objects become apparent.